Hello, my name is Casey Quisenberry, and today I'm going to show you how to make a top-down shooter in Unreal Engine 5. I'm going to show you how to do this in two ways. The first way is we're going to have it to where the player does not have to face whatever they're shooting. They're able to shoot while facing any direction. And then the second version, we're going to the exact opposite, where the player is always facing whatever they are aiming at and has to face an object in order to shoot it. Okay, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to go over is just a few housekeeping things. We're going to go over how to set up the camera angle, how to set up a temporary enemy, and how to set up a projectile. If you already have all these things done, feel free to go ahead and skip to the next chapter. That being said, for the camera angle, I actually just covered that in a recent video of mine. So I'm going to put that video in the top uh, corner of the screen. Go ahead and watch that if you want to set up the camera angle for a top-down game. But let's move on to the other two things. So the first thing we want to do is set up an enemy just to make sure that when we're shooting stuff, uh, it is accurate. So all I did is I just set up a you know a static mesh and I put this little emissive texture on it. Here you would just put your enemy, so your mesh or your skeleton or whatever. Uh, but for my purposes, I'm just going to be putting this. Uh, and then in the event graph, we're actually going to have the important thing uh, for the testing purposes and for the day. We have a you know a little health system. I covered the same health system in my need to know nodes video, but I'm just going to go ahead and go over it here. So on event any damage, we are going to uh, basically set up a variable called AI health. We're going to put the max health here. So we're going to take this AI health, put it into a subtraction system. So we are basically going to take the health and subtract the damage. We are then going to clamp that value between zero and the max health. We're then going to set the AI's health. We are then going to see if it equals zero. If it equals zero, we are then going to destroy the actor. For you, you know, you might have an animation or something. Whatever happens that to your AI when they die or to your enemy when they die or to whoever is being shot when its health equals zero would go here. And the final thing is to add a tag. So again, tag is just a way to give certain things label. We're going to just tag this enemy. You could also tag it AI or whatever you need to tag it, uh, create your own tag there. And that's all we're going to do. Again, this is very simplistic, not meant to be an actual enemy, but just sh to show off our little system here. So the next is to set up the projectile. Again, I just set up, I have like a little mesh here. It's just a little sphere. Uh, I then have a box or a sphere collision here to do some work as well. And then I have a projectile motion. So basically the three things you need are a mesh or some sort of, you know, like effect or something. And then you just need a sphere collision and then you need projectile mo uh, movement. However, we're going to edit the initial settings of the projectile movement. So for the initial speed, I put 3000. For the max speed, I put 10,000. The next thing is to make bouncing is zero and make bouncing is velocity stop threshold zero. This just is going to stop our our projectile from bouncing around like the default Unreal one does. We don't want that to bounce. And then the next thing is all the way down here on velocity. We're going to change this uh, X value to be 3000. However, again, this is very customizable. So feel free to play around with all of these different settings to get the projectile that you want. I, I know I say this a lot, but for this particular thing, this really depends on what you're going for with your game. So set this up however, however you want. But if you just want to figure out this system first, just use these settings and then go back and play with it. Then in the event graph, we are going to grab this sphere, left click, add a event begin play. It's not here because I'm currently using it. Yeah, it's down here. So event begin play. Off this, we're just going to get other actor has tag enemy or whatever you put the tag as your, of your AI enemy of. We're just going to have a branch check. If it is in fact that actor, we are then going to apply damage. I have the damage set at one, but I'm going to go ahead and set that to three just so we kill anything that we hit with our weapon. Again, set that to whatever you want. Uh, we're then going to have a delay and then we're going to destroy the bullets or the projectile because we don't want the projectile just hanging around. And then if it's false, we're just going to take a delay and destroy the actor. So this is if it, like, it hits a wall or it hits something. So, you know, if you have a more complicated system where maybe a projectile can kill an enemy, but it also can like blow up a wall or something, you would just basically have another check like this down here. But for our purposes, I'm just going to have it to where it destroys the projectile. Okay, now let's get into the actual code of how to make the top-down shooter. In your character blueprint, we are going to add a reference from where we are going to be shooting our projectile from. You're going to need this for either version, so just go ahead and follow along with this. So we're going to add an arrow component. Now for the first version, we're just going to put it above our character. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it above our character, above them. Uh, again, just go ahead and follow along if you're doing the other version uh, and we'll we'll fix it when we get there. We go ahead and follow along and we're just going to rename this projectile ref. Can name that projectile ref. 
and we are going to leave that unparented. So you can leave that right there. And so the way the code is going to work is that we're basically going to get information from the mouse and pass it along to this arrow. So this arrow is going to follow our mouse, is going to basically be rotating to find out where our mouse is. So let's go ahead and write the code for that. So in our event graph, we're going to be using our event tick because we're going to need to calculate exactly where our mouse is at every single frame because if not, our response to our projectile is going to be very, very slow. However, this is of course really, really expensive or it's of course, you know, expensive on the machinery. So I highly recommend that you add some sort of Boolean. So, you know, if there's certain areas where you can't shoot or certain areas where you're not using the, the shoot functionality, I recommend having an air, a branch right here and then some sort of condition that would determine whether or not you can shoot. For the purposes of the video, I'm not gonna have that, but I recommend you have something like that uh, just in case. So the first thing we need to do is get a reference to where our mouse is on screen. Now there are a couple of different ways to do this, but I found that this method is going to be the easiest. So we're going to get player controller. We are then going to get a node called get hit result under cursor by channel. So as you can see, there's multiple different versions of this, but we're just gonna get by channel. So the way that this basically works is similar to a line trace, except it's going to be doing a line trace, but where our cursor, where our mouse is on screen. So it's going to be getting the data from that. So the next thing that we need to do is to break this hit result so that we can actually get the data from what's happening. From there, we need to, you know, expand this and go to location because this is basically the location of where our mouse is. And we're going to get a node called find look at rotation. What this does is it gives us two different vectors and then gives us the rotation for how to basically uh, go between these two vectors. So the target is going to be our location because that is where we want our final destination to be is the target, which is the mouse. So we're basically going to be looking for our mouse, but we need to plug something into start and that is where our reference comes in. So I'm going to get this projectile arrow. I am going to get its world location and then we're just going to plug that in. So just to go over how this works, we're going to get the data from our mouse. We are then going to get where our arrow is and we're going to get the value of what, how we need to rotate an object in order to look between these two. However, we're going to run into a couple of problems if we want the arrow to properly be going where we want. Mainly, the, anytime that the character rotates, our projectile is going to be completely messed up. So if our player's facing one way, it's going to rotate the arrow. We want that to not happen. So we need to actually subtract the actor rotation from the rotation of the arrow, which we're gonna do now. So the first step is to split this pin struct so we can get better access to these values. So we are going to get actor rotation. So this is again the rotation of our actor. We are going to split this value and then we are just going to subtract these two numbers, specifically the yaw value. So that way, you know, we're basically going to be taking this actor and you know, and, and making it to where if they rotate like this, it does not matter at all. So that is the, the first uh, step to that. Now for the next step, we do not want the arrow to be rotating on the X or Y axis. This will make it to where the arrow is pointing up and pointing down and pointing in weird directions that aren't actually facing the enemies you're wanting to shoot. So we're basically just going to subtract the X and Y axis from our rotation value so that we're only dealing with that Z value, which we want. So we're going to get this projectile reference, get its world rotation. We're gonna move this up here. We're gonna do a similar thing where we again split the struct pins so we can get access to these values. We're only gonna need the X and Y value because our Z value is being taken care of down here. So I'm going to copy this up here. So we're gonna plug in our X right here and then we're going to plug in this bottom X of our get actor rotation into it as well. And then we are going to literally do the exact same thing for our Y. So just copy and paste. Let's connect our Y's. And we're gonna leave that Z value alone. So right now what we have is we have three nodes that give us three different values. And if you notice, they are the values of our roll, our pitch, and our yaw. So that means we have enough to make a rotator. And this is going to be the rotation that our arrow needs to have. 
So I'm going to plug in this here, plug in this here, and plug in this here, and now we have a rotation value that is correct. So again, I said we are going to want to change the relative rotation of this arrow, not the world rotation. And now we're going to set the relative rotation. And plug that in there. And then we're just gonna go out, plug that into our event tick, because again, we want this to happen every frame. And there we go. And of course, uh, I'm gonna organize this a little bit. Okay, so right now it's not actually going to be shooting anything, but I still just wanna check it out so you can see what's actually happening. So you don't have to follow along with this, but I'm just gonna show you. So I'm gonna turn the hidden in game off. And then actually a very important step I just forgot is that you're going to want to go on your event begin play. Uh, you're going to want to get a player controller and you're going to want to pull off of that and type in show mouse cursor. It'll give you this note, you're gonna set that to true because we're gonna to wanna to be able to see our mouse uh, so that we can actually know how to aim and we can actually have like a crosshair type situation. Uh, you might have already done this, but I just wanted to point that out for anyone who hasn't done that to make sure your, your mouse is visible. Uh, so now I start the game. As you can see, the arrow is pointing to where my mouse is at all times, no matter where I am. And then also if I move, you can see that it's doing the same thing as well. Even with my movement, no matter how I move, no matter what direction I am, it's going to be in the same place. So let's just put my mouse over here. You know, no matter where I go, it's going to be pointing at that exact direction. Next step is to make it to where we actually spawn our projectile and fire it at wherever the mouse is pointing. So I'm gonna get a input here. So this is where you put your enhanced input or your action input or whatever you want to actually shoot. For me, I'm just gonna use the left mouse button, which is the same as uh, left clicking. So we're gonna get that. From there, we are going to spawn actor from class here is where we're going to select the projectile that we made or whatever projectile that you made it's going to put here now we are going to get our spawn transform from our projectile reference so we're going to get world transform and we're just going to plug that in right there so now if we go here as you can see when i clicked it, it shoots and again, it'll shoot from any angle. As you can see, it's coming out of the arrow. So there we have that code completely working right here. However, you know, you might want to add an ammo system in here or some sort of delay function that doesn't allow you to continually spam it. Um, that's going to be something I'm going to let you do on your own because uh, there are other videos for that. Now just to show it off with some enemies. So I go up here, I shoot, boom. Now I can also do it while running. Right there. And this will, will work for any enemy that you wanna set up. But for right there, we have our system that we're going to use for the first section. Okay, so for the next part, we're going to take the event tick because we need it again. So we're gonna go down here. And basically we're gonna do the exact same thing as we just did, but it's going to be a lot less complicated. So we're still gonna need this section right here to get the data for our mouse. So let me just put this down over here. We are then going to need this, this get actor location in this fine look at rotation. We're gonna copy that. Going to again get the location from our mouse, not the impact point. We're going to get the location from our mouse, plug that in. Now we are just going to get actor location or set actor rotation is what I meant. So we're going to set actor rotation. And again, we're gonna split it. We're gonna leave those two the same. We're just gonna plug in the Z. And that's it. We don't have to subtract any values or anything. This is all that we have to do. So again, it's a le lot less complicated. So this is going to rotate our player towards the mouse. So as you can see, no matter where my mouse is, my player is going to be facing it. As you can see, they're walking kind of funny. So for a system like this, I recommend having some sort of strafe animation system. I'm going to put a link below to a video done by a, uh, another tutorial person named Matt Asplin. 
Uh, they're probably the best uh, Unreal tutorialist on YouTube. I highly recommend them if you are trying to learn a lot about Unreal. They do amazing videos. Uh, they specifically have a video that goes over how to do a strafing system. And I think if you add that system to this, uh, it's going to look really good. It's going to play uh, great as well. And say hypothetically, you know, that this is more of like a shooter. So you want sort of like a gun in that area. All you have to do is that when you have your gun on your character, here you go on your character, you just move this arrow or move the arrow or whatever reference you're using for shooting down here uh, to where the weapon is. So this is probably be more accurate to where, you know, a weapon would be. Uh, you probably might want to back it up since it's coming out of the end of the arrow. So put it wherever the gun would be. And you can just have a top down shooter. Okay, again, doing a, a test with some enemies. So I go here, shoot it. You know, I'm running over here, shooting it as well. As you can see, I'm just looking at the, where I'm shooting and it'll work for the enemies as well. All right, that's going to do it for th this video. I just wanted to, sh to show off this system that I made. I'm very proud of this system. This is actually one of the first systems I ever developed on my own without any help from anyone. Uh, and I've used it in a couple of games now. And it is one that I've I put a lot of work into when I first developed and came up with it. Uh, because I couldn't find anything on YouTube that went over how to do top-down shooting. So I'm glad to, to pass on that knowledge uh, to anyone watching. Um, so thank you, and I hope you learned a lot about top-down shooting in Unreal Engine 5.